everyone, and welcome to another episode of AdBits. I'm Adam Bergman, tax attorney and founder of Byray Financial. And on today's AdBits, adding a member to a self-directed IRA LLC. So before I get started, let me just give a quick summary. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm just biting a cough, but I'm going to do my best to uh, get through this without coughing too much, I promise. But by way of summary, this podcast will discuss if you have an IRA LLC already, so let's say you have an IRA that owns 100% of an LLC and you want to add another IRA, maybe it's a Roth, maybe it's your spouse's IRA, your kid's IRA. Number one, can you do it? And number two, what's the process of doing it? So quick answer to those questions. Um, yes, you can do it. An IRA is technically not a disqualified person under 4975E2. And uh, number two, we'd amend the, part, the operating agreement to add the member uh, based off the partnership accounting rules, take a snapshot of the capital accounts at that point, built in gains on those assets. And then um, the new uh, period would begin when the new member um, comes in to the um, LLC. So it's um, important to understand how this works. Get this question a lot. Um, there's some uncertainty. People are not sure what the answer is. Can you do it? Can you not do it? So. As a tax lawyer, what I do is I go right to the tax code. I don't mess around. I don't look at the internet. I don't listen to uh, wannabe lawyers or people on YouTube who think they know a lot about tax law, even though they're not a lawyer, or maybe they are a lawyer, but they're not actually a tax lawyer. You know, I have a master's in taxation. I was a tax lawyer for you know nine years at some of the largest law firms in the world. So if you ask me a question about litigation or um, torts or real estate law, I'm, I'll tell you straight away, I'm not your guy. Okay, but if it's tax law, specifically IRAs, uh, I am your guy. So let's look at the definition of disqualified person under 4975E2. And if you go through that definition, you'll see there is no mention of IRAs. It starts with fiduciary, someone providing services to a plan, like a custodian, uh, an employer whose employers are covered by the plan, an employee org. Now, then it goes into like the lineal descendants, 50% or more ownership, talks about... <coughs> 10% um, or more shareholders, directors, officers, highly comps of entities own 50% or more by disqualified people, but you're not going to see the word retirement plan. So based off the term revenue code, um, the position, um, my position is pretty clear that yes, you can add an IRA to an already established IRA LLC. Now, <laughs> the IRS in the past has mentioned that they want to at least they've talked about it in some proposed rules that they want to actually add an IRA as a disqualified person. So that tells you that clearly at this point, they uh, understand that based off law and the tax code, uh, an IRA or retirement plan is not deemed a disqualified person. That, that um, proposed legislation uh, actually never went anywhere. So as of today, 2023, um, an IRA is not a disqualified person, so you can add an IRA to another entity owned by an IRA. <clears throat> now, if you wanted to add your personal money, uh, money of a lineal descendant, a parent, child, spouse, daughter-in-law, son-in-law, personally, that would clearly be problematic because the entity is 50% or more owned um, by the retirement account. So adding um, personal money to it would... Um, become an issue. But since it's an IRA and you're adding another IRA to it, that second person, that IRA is not a disqualified person. So there technically is no prohibited transaction. Um, I've had some people who are somewhat conservative say, listen, Adam, what happens if I set up another LLC? I'll fund that new LLC with the new IRA money and then contribute the asset the first LLC owns to that new LLC. <coughs> Excuse me. That's, that's cleaner. That's um, Probably the cleanest approach. It's it's definitely more costly. That's why you know, I didn't mention it at the outset. But the idea under the Swanson case is that an entity only becomes disqualified once it's funded. So if you take a newly established entity, um, add the IRA money to it, and then contribute the real estate or whatever the other IRA LLC owns to the new LLC that will be owned by the multiple IRAs, um, you're starting scratch from scratch a new under Swanson and it's a little bit cleaner. Now, personally, I, I'm not concerned. Uh, we've allowed this, even if it's different proportions. Um, 
IRA owns 100% of an LLC. Now I want to add my Roth. There's no clearly no personal benefit being derived. It's no personal money. My IRA is paying fair market value for uh, the LLC interests. Um, pro rata, right? If my IRA LLC one is worth 100K, because that's what the real estate's worth. And now I want to add another 100K for my IRA number two. IRA one and IRA two would own 50 50 of the IRA LLC. That's clearly pro rata based off the valuations. So if you do that based off the code, the IRA is not disqualified. There's clearly no personal benefit being derived. <coughs> Excuse me, right? The main crux of the prohibited transaction rules is to stop personal benefit, to stop self dealing, to stop conflict of interest. Now, if there's no conflict of interest or no self dealing because there's no personal benefit being derived, right? The IRAs are benefiting from this transaction. The second IRA is going to be buying, investing into that LLC for fair market value. None of that money will go to the first IRA, uh, which is in fact not a disqualified person. Anyways, um, the um, primitive transaction rules will, will not be triggered. So some people are super um, you know, conservative and for some reason take the approach that an IRA, and I'm conservative just to, to be out there, <coughs> Not, a, not not totally in life. I, I don't mean I'm a conservative person. I just mean from a tax standpoint, uh, I'm not going to tell someone to do something that um, I think is risky. Why? Uh, my IRA business, the self-directed IRA business, one account's not going to make or break the company. We have 20,000 plus accounts. We charge flat fees, small amount of money each year. So there's no incentive for us to tell people to do something that uh, is risky or uh, is uncertain because it's not worth the risk, right? We're not making enough money to do it. If you were paying me, for example, a million dollars for the account, <laughs> there's more incentive, right, to push the envelope, push the boundaries. But for a few hundred bucks a year, it's not worth it. So um, I go off the code and clearly um, the IRA is um, you know, not a disqualified person. Um, the IRA owner is, the lineal descendants of the IRA owner is. So if you have an IRA that owns an LLC, and you want to add a second IRA to it or um, of, of yours or parents or someone else, um, it's permissive, uh, permissible. If you want to be ultra, ultra conservative, take no risk. You can set up a new LLC and then fund it with the asset or cash from the first IRA LLC and then add the IRA money to that second LLC simultaneously. And then you could then um, you know hang your hat on Swanson and also the uh, 4975. Uh, D2 rules where IRAs are not deemed a disqualified person. So that's the pod. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I get this question a lot. Um, the next podcast I will do is actually, can you add money um, to an IRA LC? So let's say your IRA owns 100% of the LC and you want to add money to the LC through the IRA. Can it be done? <coughs> um, here's a sneak peek. Um, it's going to generally follow the same logic. And adding a member, right? Since an IRA is not a disqualified person, adding money to it um, will obtain the same ownership. Um, and that is actually even safer um, and, and even less, I wouldn't even say risky, but um, is without a doubt not prohibited because the IRA continues to own the same percentage, just added money. Uh, so long as the operating agreement allows for it, um, it will be okay. So sneak peek, I'll, I'll do the next uh, ad bits on that. So if you're interested, you can uh, take a listen next week. And uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it. Otherwise, um, thanks for hanging out today. I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. Um, subscribe if you haven't yet. It'd be crazy not to. To our YouTube channel, it's free. You get amazing uh, content. I work uh, tirelessly. Yeah, I do. I love this stuff. Uh, I'm spending a lot of my time just kind of coming up with interesting questions. If you guys have feedback, comments, leave them. I love hearing from people. I'd love to get your thoughts. If you have ideas for upcoming uh, podcast or videos, um, send them my way. You can hit us up on social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, our YouTube channel, of course. Uh, you can email us at info diary financial, um, say ask Adam or AdBits or just put my name on the subject. It will get to me, I promise. And I'll get back to you. Or I'll just kind of use your idea for a new video or podcast um, and we can all learn from each other. So thanks again for hanging out. Have a great, great, great day and see everyone next week.